In today's episode of Home Lab Showdown, we've got a battle between the wily old veteran in Synology and the slick up and comer in Ugreen to find out who is the better NAS brand. We all know Synology, they've been around forever and are arguably the go-to brand when you think of off-the-shelf NAS devices. However, Ugreen has something to say about that. Yes, that same Ugreen that makes 4,000 different chargers for your phone and hubs for your PC. It's young versus old, it's veteran versus rookie, there will be blood, there will be tears, and at the end, we will crown a winner. Let's get into it. So you're immediately thinking, Brett, I understand why you pick Synology, but why Ugreen? Why not QNAP or Asistore? Well, for a few reasons. One is because both of these companies have sponsored videos on my channel before, so this is an opportunity to show absolutely zero bias since neither of them are sponsoring this video and neither know I'm doing it. And number two, while they both make off-the-shelf NAS devices, their approach to the hardware and software and even pricing is drastically different. And that makes for a much more interesting showdown. Happy now? No? Too bad. We are going to break this down into three sections. Hardware, software, and pricing. All of these are important, but you may prioritize one over the other. So my weighting on these may be different from yours and that's okay. Go make your own video. Starting with hardware, right out of the gate, Synology has way more options to choose from. They have a low cost single drive consumer unit, all the way up to massive 60 bay and full flash ones designed for business use. They also have both desktop units and rack mountable solutions, the latter of which Ugreen doesn't, but we'll get to them in a bit. Personally, I run a 1U 4Bay RS822 Plus combined with a 1U expansion unit that gives me four more drives. This makes sense for me since I have a big old 42U server rack that's totally not compensating for something. But for my remote system, I'm actually using one of their 4Bay desktop systems since it's at my friend's house. Well, not right now, because I need it for this video, and he's not a turbo nerd like me. In terms of build quality, I'd say from my experience, the Synology systems are okay. They're certainly not bad, but they're also not what I would consider a premium feeling device. Hell, I even broke one trying to install RAM before, but that's probably more on me. Their rack mounted solutions do offer a bit more solid of a feel than their desktop siblings, probably since there's more metal there and less plastic. Personally, I don't particularly weigh the build quality too heavily since for the most part, these are going to be just sitting in one spot and rarely ever move. That's not to say I can't appreciate a nice robustly built server chassis. As I mentioned before, there are a zillion options in the Synology lineup. However, the actual horsepower you get in a lot of these systems is very underwhelming. Unless you're going for the super expensive enterprise line, you're getting very low powered CPUs and usually just two gigabytes of RAM. Sometimes if you splurge, you do get four though. A lot of their systems do allow you to upgrade the RAM, which is good, but imagine shipping a high level consumer system in 2024 with two gigabytes of RAM. Embarrassing. Those high level units do let you upgrade to 32 gigabytes of RAM by just buying an affordable kit and doing it yourself, but some of the lower models have a max of just six gigabytes. Six, that's the max. Now, does this matter though? Do you need a high powered CPU and plenty of RAM for a NAS? Well, that depends as we'll see when we get into the software. But let's talk about Ugreen's hardware for a minute here. Ugreen recently entered the NAS game by releasing six models via Kickstarter, which was a weird choice. Like, Ugreen isn't a small company, so it was kind of strange that they went with a Kickstarter to release a NAS lineup, right? That's not just me. You may have seen my sponsored video on one of their four bay units, so if you want a full breakdown of that, then go watch it. I have their six bay unit right here, which, spoiler alert, I do think is the best model in their entire lineup. Their lineup only includes desktop units, which makes sense for a first round of products in this market. In terms of build quality, Actually really well done here. If you put the Synology and the Ugreen desktop units in front of me and told me one was an established brand that is arguably the brand to beat and the other was a Kickstarter, I'd say, well, it's obvious. The Ugreen one is the brand to beat. The casing is a nice brushed metal. The design looks premium. There's Thunderbolt ports, SD card slots, an easy to access hatch for upgrading your RAM and NVMe drives. And that's across their entire lineup. They have a two bay, two four bays, a six bay, an eight bay, and a full flash model. For the most part here, we'll be discussing the three and a half inch standard models. While Synology is giving you two gigabytes of RAM with a max of six, 
Ukraine comes in with eight gigabytes of RAM on their entire lineup. On their entry bay, two bay unit, you have a max of 16, and on their eight bay chungus, you can slap 64 gigs in that bad boy. Let's put up a chart here to compare their two, four, six, and eight bay models from both sides. Honestly, Ukraine takes the edge at pretty much every level. You're getting a better CPU, more RAM, better IO, and arguably better build quality. Note that I am taking the higher tier skew at each level to even the playing field. We'll get to pricing in a bit though. So for hardware, it's kind of hard to crown a winner. After that last spiel, you may think that I'm giving it to Ugreen, but Synology just has so many options for every single use case. I really want to give this round a tie, but I hate when people make a competition video like this and just say things are a tie to make it easy. So by the slightest of margins, and I mean the slightest, I'm gonna give it to Ugreen here. Surprised? Yeah, me too, but these things are actually really nice little systems. Let's talk software now. You can have the best hardware in the world, but if using it actually sucks, then who cares? Imagine buying a Bugatti, but like there's a steering wheel on the hood and the gas pedal is in the trunk. Again, we'll start with Synology. I'd say the consensus when you ask Synology users their opinions on their systems as a whole is, I mean, the hardware is a little overpriced, but the software is so nice to use. Yeah, I was just looking for the bathroom. I'd say my feelings here are pretty much in line with that. As an actual Synology user, I can definitely say that as a NAS, the software is amazing. Setting up shares, performing backups, syncing to a remote system, all of that is seamless on here. When we talk about backing up devices to my Synology, I run a tool called Active Backup for Business. Silly name, great software. I install the agent on all the systems I want to back up, whether it's Windows, Mac OS, Linux, an SMB server, virtual machine, pretty much anything. Then you can control these tasks directly from the Synology system. You can browse and restore individual files or folders from specific backup versions, or just restore the entire system. I've tried plenty of NAS softwares from many different brands, and this is by far my favorite. To back up my Synology system remotely, I'm using Hyper Backup, which is another backup software, not to be confused with Synology Drive, which is another backup software. What I'm getting at is that while the app library in the Synology ecosystem is extensive, it can be a bit redundant. I mean, just look at all the apps they have for backups. It's hard to say that this is bad since the amount of features that comes with plenty of apps is great, but it can be a bit overwhelming and cumbersome. Another big selling point of living in the Synology ecosystem is the ability to use Synology Surveillance Station. I know plenty of people that love this feature, but I personally don't use it. I've heard it's great, but you have to buy a license to use it based on the number of cameras you have. I hate this. I run a Reolink system that is a one-time purchase for the cameras and NVR, and that's it. So personally, the surveillance station doesn't tickle my pickle, but objectively, it's a nice part of the Synology ecosystem. Two other aspects I wanna to touch on is the networking and the virtualization. Synology does an excellent job at providing you the necessary networking features to give you a proper NAS experience. This includes a VPN server, VPN client, and link aggregation. You can get other cool features like running a DNS and DHCP server. I heavily rely on the VPN client feature since that's what I use to make sure that my remote server can connect back to my home unit. Sure, there are other ways of connecting, but this gives me the most direct line without having to rely on a third party for a relay. Virtualization may be a weird thing to bring up considering we are talking about network attached storage, not a server. Well, recently that line has started to blur with pretty much every off the shelf NAS now supporting some kind of virtualization in the form of Docker and virtual machine management. Synology's implementation of Docker isn't bad. I'm used to running Fortainer as my Docker orchestrator, so this is a bit different, but still very usable. Nothing to write home about though. Their virtual machine management follows the same trend. It's okay. I've tried running some desktop Linux machines on it and those run fine, but Windows VMs were pretty unstable. This may have something to do with the underpowered processors. Personally, I don't use my Synology for anything other than storage, so this doesn't really bother me. But if you're buying an NAS with the intention of it being an all-in-one device, then you may care about this. With all of that said, as a NAS, Synology knocks it out the park. As an all-in-one, there may be a bunch of cool apps, but if they have underpowered hardware, 
that kind of limits what you can actually do with it. But what about you, Green? Well, like we said, they're new to the game and they're bringing their own in-house software. When it first released, like when they paid me to do a video on it, it was not good. The only reason I didn't refuse to do the sponsored video was because at the end of the day, it did do the bare minimum that I'd expect out of a NAS. And I mean the bare minimum. I am happy to say that they have made some pretty big improvements in the short time since it was released. They cleaned up the UI a lot, updated the fonts, fixed some typos, added virtualization, and just overall improved the speed and usability. So does that mean it's good now? No. I'd say after all those improvements, it now sits at average. Like I mentioned, you can do basic network sharing stuff and you can do backups, but not to the level of Synology. From a device in your network, you can run the Ugreen app, which will let you do direct syncing and backups, but the app is kind of weird. Like it's basically a mirror of the web client, except now in the sync and backups app, you have the option to send data from that machine to the Ugreen NAS. It's not bad, I mean, it works. It's just not nearly as useful as Synology's active backup for business. For example, in Ugreen, the backup modes aren't super clear. And then you only have the option to backup on a file change or manually. Why can't I just set a time? And if you wanna backup our Ugreen NAS to a remote Ugreen NAS, we can only do that via rsync and not direct to another Ugreen NAS. Although that is coming soon and may actually be a thing by the time you're watching this. Another thing that is honestly a pretty major issue is that both Synology and Ugreen run the ButterFS file system by default, which is great and it allows for snapshots of your data over time. The Synology allows you to take snapshots on pretty much any folder on the entire NAS, but the Ugreen doesn't. They call their snapshots versions and these only work with jobs from the Sync and Backups app. Why? Snapshots are a huge feature of ButterFS and not being able to properly utilize them is a problem. Last complaint I have is that I don't see any way to set how I wanna be notified. Like if a drive is dying, I'd like to get an email or something. The only thing I found was being able to toggle which notifications you get in the actual UI. All of these things need to be fixed in future releases. Moving on to other apps in the Ugreen cinematic universe, you'll notice that there are significantly less than Synology. Depending on who you are and how you use it, this isn't really a negative. Sure, less apps generally means less features, but it also means less complexity. But just how I praise Synology for their networking features, it's the opposite over here. There isn't much outside of link aggregation. No VPN server, no VPN client, no DNS server, none of that. If you want to access a remote device, you have to rely on Ugreen's native tunneling or a third-party DDNS service. Or use the actual remote public IP like a psychopath. I'm hoping that they have VPN features on the roadmap because I think that's a necessary networking feature for a proper 321 backup system. Funny thing, going back to the link aggregation stuff, with 2.5 gig on most devices and even 10 gig on this one, even with Synology's link aggregation on their one gig ports, you still don't get the performance of the Ugreens. Okay, let's talk virtualization. Honestly, the Docker implementation by Ugreen is just about the same as Synology. It's fine. The VM management seems to work much better though. Everything just feels more stable and snappy. No doubt related to the much more powerful hardware you get in the Ugreen lineup. So in terms of an all-in-one device, the Ugreen actually holds its weight pretty well. And guess what? If you don't like any of this, you can actually install your own OS. That's right, the bootloader isn't locked down on here and you can spin up TrueNAS, Unraid, Open Media Vault, Windows, Arch, Temple OS, whatever. This is huge and major props to Ugreen for allowing this. Synology doesn't, so if you don't like their OS or if they just go belly up for some reason, you have a pretty um, interesting paperweight. Now I'm not gonna get into every single app and feature of these, they both have photo management, media center, music, and other media apps, but I don't really use those, so yeah. In terms of performance, they both perform as expected, so again, no complaints. However, there is an obvious winner here with the Synology. Ugreen's OS may be simple, and may have basic functionality, and may be able to leverage the better hardware with virtualization, but that can't overcome the lack of proper snapshots, but hey, you can at least install TrueNAS on it if you want to. At the end of the day though, money talks. How much did these things cost? 
Are the Ugreen devices cheap enough to offset their lackluster software? Well, here's a similar breakdown from before, but now with prices added. At the very low end range, you can see the Synology has some pretty affordable options. If you're just looking for a cheap NAS device, then these are pretty good. Don't expect it to do anything extra, but they'll run just fine. You'll also probably notice that outside of the two bay premium level, the Ugreen devices are more expensive. But wait, I thought Synology was supposed to be the expensive one. I don't know what to tell you, man. These are the prices. Now, obviously we are comparing these by the number of drive bays since that makes the most sense, but that doesn't mean that everything else is equal. As we discussed in the hardware section, Ukraine just has better hardware when comparing apples to apples. Let's start with the four bay devices. For $600, you get either Synology's high-end unit or Ugreen's lower end. But Ugreen's lower end unit is arguably better across the board outside of the max RAM. Then for just $100 more, you can get the Ugreen DXP4800 Plus, which gives you an even better CPU, a 10 gig port, 128 gigabyte SSD instead of eMMC, and 64 gigs of supported RAM. That sounds worth it to me. Looking at the 6 bay again, we can see that the Ugreen is coming in $100 more expensive than the Synology. But again, I think it's worth it. A much better CPU, more RAM, higher capacity RAM, native 10 gig ports, and Thunderbolt 4 ports for super fast external storage. For $1,000, I actually think that this is the best option in their lineup if, and only if, you plan on using it as an all-in-one device. Stepping up to the 8-bay, the Ugreen actually comes in $500 more expensive at $1,500. That's a ton of money, but again, just better hardware. So now I'm at a crossroads because the Synology devices outside of the super low end are way overpriced for the hardware you get, but the software is really good. On the other side, the Ugreen devices are more expensive, but you do get solid hardware, but the software is pretty mid but you can bring your own operating system. But if you're using that, then why are you doing this and not just building your own NAS for cheaper? This is tough, but with all of that considered, I'm gonna give another extremely slight win to Ugreen here. Let me be very clear that I know this hardware would be much cheaper if you just buy them yourself and build your own NAS. But we have to look at this through the eyes of someone who doesn't wanna do that and I think Ugreen provides a better value. Wow, so you're saying that Ugreen has better hardware and pricing? So clearly they uh, must be the winner here, right? Well, mm, Synology gets the win overall. Let me tell you why. When you're buying an off-the-shelf NAS device, I think the biggest factor is the software by a long shot. I'd say software accounts for about 60% of the score with price and hardware each counting for about 20. Remember, this is about who makes the better off the shelf NAS, not the best server. So here's an arbitrary scoring slide to show how I chose the winner. Even with Ugreen having a slight win in the hardware field and another slight win for pricing, it just took too big of an L in the software category. At the end of the day, the fact is that Synology has an extensive lineup of different NAS devices that will fit nearly any person's use case, along with an amazing software stack. Yes, their hardware is a little bit underpowered for what you pay, but as long as the NAS performs as expected and does so without issues, then who cares? So congrats to Synology for beating an iPhone charging company at making a NAS. I'll be sending your prize in the mail. I do think that Ugreen has a promising product and with some proper software updates, I think it can be a true competitor. I'd really like to revisit the Ugreen system after a couple of updates and do a deep dive. But that's it for this one. Let me know which two home lab contenders you want to see face off in the next one. Unify versus Omada? Epic versus Xeon? Colton versus Wolfgang? Sound off down in the comments. If you like this video, then drop a like. If you want to see more episodes of Home Lab Showdown, then subscribe so that I know to keep making these. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my off the shelf support system. That is a perfect 10 out of 10 in hardware, if you know what I mean. You guys are cool beans. And if you're still watching, you're a QNAP. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.